All right, hi. James Weston, y'all. Yes, thank you uh, for making it out today. Um, I'm just going to do a quick overview of authentication in Happy and what it takes to uh, authenticate users and protect your uh, your resources. So, uh, first off, the slides will be available on my GitHub page, um, and I also have examples of the Happy JS supported plugins that are available in that repository. Um, with authentication in Happy, it starts with uh, an object that every server has. That object's going to have two registration methods, one's for schemes, one's for strategies. Uh, there's a method for testing your strategy against the request, and then there is a, a method for setting a default strategy. Uh, first couple points about schemes, uh, it's just a plan to determine how a user is authenticated. Um, are you looking for specific headers? Are you looking for a cookie or some other way? Um, when you write a scheme, it's going to make a call to server.auth.scheme, but most of us aren't going to have to worry about that because there are plenty of plugins that do this. Um, HappyJS has four specific types of schemes that it supports. There's a basic authentication, which is just HTTP basic authentication. There's a uh, an RFC out there with some specific headers that you're going to pass back and forth that are going to determine whether the user is authenticated. Um, I'll be stepping through at the end of this presentation uh, some specific examples of how to actually implement these plugins. Um, Happy Auth Cookie is uh, the plugin which will use a cookie to determine whether a user is uh, authenticated. Just the presence of that cookie and it being valid will determine if that user is authenticated. Bell is a plugin for third-party authentication. So if you want to use OAuth and you want to have passwordless authentication, let users log in with Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and such. And then um, Happy Auth Hawk is a plugin which allows you to specify an authorization header. Um, and it's probably more designed for different uh, applications to authenticate with one another, not necessarily authenticating specific users. Um, hopefully we'll have enough time to get through all the different examples. But with schemes, it's already been done for you. You're going to spend most of your time uh, configuring an authentication strategy. So uh, when you are configuring that authentication strategy, uh, you're going to give it a name. You're going to reference the scheme that you're using um, you're going to be able to specify a mode. It's not required. Uh, you have a couple options there. Uh, the default is true. Um, you can set it to um, false, which will be equivalent to optional. Try? I'm not sure if that's the case, actually. I'm sorry. Um, but true and required are the same. Optional and try are the same. Uh, with optional and try, you don't have to be authenticated in order for your handler to reply. Um, you could do that on your landing page if you want to um, have mixed content. Um, and then each authentication scheme is going to have some very specific options that you would specify when you're creating the strategy. Um, with the different plugins, they each have their own name, uh, which are all pretty straightforward uh, with Hawk. It actually registers two different schemes depending on uh, which flavor of uh, authentication you want to roll out. So uh, after you have chosen an authentication scheme, after you've specified the strategy that you want to use, you're going to want to have to secure your routes. You'll be spending uh, you know, a considerable amount of time doing this. Um, so we're just going to step through some of the different ways that you can uh, add the authentication to your route. Uh, this is the basic idea. In your config option, you specify the name of your strategy. And that's uh, you know, the long and the short of it. Not much more to talk about. But you do have the option to specify a default strategy instead of going through each individual route and securing it. So if you specify the default strategy, now all of your routes are going to be using that strategy. However, um, you may want to override some of those settings, or actually, excuse me, um, the default strategy 
can actually take on a couple different options. Um, but you may want to override that. So if you specify the default, you can go into individual routes and you can turn off authentication. If you set off to false, you could change the mode or any other configurable setting. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, actually implementing it um, like I said, these examples are all available in this repository, but implementing it is not too much work. You're going to load the plugin that you're going to want to use as long uh, as well with Happy, oh. um, with Basic Auth. Uh, you need to have some place where you're storing username and passwords, um, and then you're going to create a function which will compare the username and passwords with the database. You're going to receive from the request the username and a password, and then you're going to compare them and uh, determine whether that user is valid. If the user is valid, um, let me just step through this real quick. So uh, the validation function takes a username and a password and a callback in the signature, um, and you compare the user and the password to determine if it's valid, and then you specify a object known as credentials, which will be available later on in your request through request.auth.credentials. You can store any information you want in there. In this example, we just store the name. Uh, then you call the callback with an error. Um, you specify whether the user is or is not valid, and you pass along that credentials object. Um, when you're setting up your server, you're going to specify your, your different handlers. You'll have a public handler, you'll have private handlers, or whatever it is that you happen to have in your application. Um, create a server, you register the plugin, um, and you specify your auth, val uh, your auth options. Uh, for basic auth, it's just the validation function uh, and with that particular object. Uh, validation function. Um, then you call server.auth.strategy, give your strategy a name, specify the scheme and the auth options. Ooh, keep doing that. Uh, then within your routes, you have your public route, which doesn't specify any authentication. You have your private route, which you do specify in basic auth. Um, and that's it. Uh, if you were to go to the private page, your browser is going to prompt you for username and password. Um, all browsers support basic authentication. Uh, with cookie auth, a couple things change. Um, in this, as I step through this, this is just going to be highlighting the differences to get from basic auth to cookie auth. Um, we're going to load the auth cookie plugin. We're going to load joy as well because we're going to actually have to accept the username and the password through a request. Um, so the validation function that we used previously now becomes a handler. And uh, the username and the password will be found in the payload. Uh, we'll step through and compare the username and password the same way we did previously. Um, if the user is not valid, we're going to redirect them to the login page. And if they are valid, we're going to get past that point. We'll set the credentials, and then we're going to set a session. Um, the cookie that gets stored on the user's system uh, will contain everything that's within that object credentials by setting uh, request.auth.session.set, which is specific to cookie auth, the, uh, the session property. Uh, and then we'll just return a reply if the user's logged in. Uh, this is just a handler for serving up our HTML. And when a user logs out, we just need to clear the cookie. And you can accomplish that with request.auth.session.clear. Um, so now, once we've started up our server, or excuse me, once we've created our server, we're going to register the auth plugin, the auth cookie plugin. And then we're going to specify the different options for cookie auth, which would be a password to encrypt the cookie, um, the name of the cookie that will be visible to you know, anybody who's trying to, to hack your system up, 
uh, a redirect page so that whenever somebody does hit a resource that is supposed to be private, it'll redirect them to that page. Um, and then the is secure flag, which uh, doesn't change anything anymore. <laughs> I, I'm not sure exactly what it used to change. So. Um, and then we register the strategy the same way you would uh, any other strategy, passing those new options. Uh, with our new login page, we need to specify a route. Login out page needs a route. And then our post to the login page, we're going to validate the payload. Um, that should look uh, straightforward at some point. And that's pretty much it for cookie auth. Um, once you have implemented cookie auth, you can uh, incorporate that with third party authentication using Bell. Uh, Bell has support for pretty much every popular social network that you might want to use to authenticate users. Um, all, uh, the last slide in this uh, stack will, will, will highlight that. But to get started, you include the Bell plugin, uh, you include Happy Auth Cookie. Now we're going to include Happy Auth Cookie as well because with Bell, you need to use OAuth. You need to have a series of requests and responses, which will um, happen every single time you try to authenticate the user. Uh, it's not going to maintain any type of state. So what we're going to do is specify on our login page uh, Bell authentication, and when we validate the user, we're going to set a cookie, and then every other page will use the auth cookie in order to know that the user is validated. Um, if the user isn't validated, then you bounce them back to the, the page that uses Bell. So now our login handler will check to see if the user is authenticated. Um, if they're not, then, um, or excuse me, if they are authenticated, we're going to set the cookie. Um, and we register both plugins, AuthCookie and Bell. And when we create the strategy for Cookie Auth, it's the same as what we uh, kind of hit on before. Um, and then with Bell, if you're not familiar with OAuth, um, you're going to have to go to the provider that you're looking to work with. Um, they'll have a developer program or some type of option um, to get the client ID and get the client secret. Um, you specify the provider. You specify a uh, password to encrypt your third party auth cookie. And then you specify the, the client settings. You register your strategy. And then um, this is just how you would go through with GitHub. Um, under your settings, there is an applications link. You click on that. You have the option to register a new application. And when you register, it provides you with a client ID and a client secret, which you'll use when you configure your authentication strategy. So when we're setting up our routes, our private handler, our private page, uh, we're going to use the auth cookie. But on our login page, we're going to use the um, third party auth that we set up. And that's uh, you know pretty much it. You can see the support for all the different social networks and, and others. Um, now with Bell, you're not forced to use these providers. This is just what there's existing support for. Um, the API allows for you to roll out any um, provider you would like as long as it's with OAuth 1.0a or OAuth 2. Um, the last type of authentication that we have um, from HappyJS has, um, it's called Hawk. It's for passing tokens back and forth. Um, what we're going to hit on in a couple slides, you actually are going to need to roll your own client that's going to use Hawk. Um, but for using uh, with your happy server, it's the same straightforward process where you load the plugin. Um, you need to store the credentials somewhere. Um, this is what a Hawk credential would look like uh, with you have an ID, you have a key, and an algorithm that you need to specify. 
um, and the options for that scheme uh, require you to have a function which will get the credentials. You pass that back to the callback, which will take care of actually validating the credentials. Um, and this is, excuse me, I'm sorry. So you, you would have some type of resource that you're protecting and you'll reference that strategy. Um, and then you would have a client that needs to go out and make a request to that strategy. So this is an example using REC. Um, you see we specify Hawk, um, which is not a happy JS uh, module. It's actually just under Aaron's uh, GitHub or NPM. But what that library will do is allow you to generate a header. That header will then be passed in through your request. Um, you need to pass uh, the same type of credential that you'd have on the server side, um, where it takes the ID, the key, and the algorithm. Um, and then you create that header using the URL, the method that you're using, and the uh, credential options. Um, and then when you generate your request, you specify that specific authentication header, and then the uh, supported module will take care of the rest. And that's it. So. Thanks.